you hear that noise? You hear that noise? You know what that is? Lemurs are magnetic. Lemurs look at us with the same sort of brain intelligence and evolutionary history that we have. So when you meet a lemur, you're meeting a relative. And when you look into a lemur's eyes, you can tell that they're looking back. And the same things that you're thinking about them, they could be thinking about you. I had to make an explainer video about math directed at lemurs because I've heard that lemurs are deep thinkers who understand numbers and sequencing, even abstract thinking. I have trouble remembering certain parts of statistics, especially Bayesian statistics. So I thought if I can make it so that a lemur can remember it, then surely I should be able to remember it. This lemur has learned to recognize which square has more red dots. He uses his nose, and if he picks the right one, which he mostly does, a sugar pellet drops down. Lemurs love sweets. So this is an attempt to express things in terms of quantities, big, small, and discuss what Bayesian statistics really is so that I can finally remember it. It's kind of a tricky thing to remember. So um, here we go. Hope you enjoy. Um, hope any lemurs who are watching are able to find this useful and able to improve their banana eating efficiency and banana gathering efficiency. For this and other lemur-related statistics and machine learning discussions, please visit patdell.com forward slash lemurs. Bayesian probability for lemurs and other primates. What is Bayesian statistics, first of all? It's probabilities changing over time due to the results of different experiments, things like sports championships or medical test results such as COVID testing are some important applications. But this presentation is for lemurs. It's directed for lemurs and lemurs like bananas, as you can see in this picture here. So first off, probability statistics is basically just the chances of something. What are the chances of picking a bad banana? If you're a lemur, which I assume you are if you're watching this, you've got a bunch of different bananas and then you have bad bananas within that whole group of bananas. So the chances are basically just the ratio of those bad bananas over the total number of bananas. In this case, you got 12 and that's over the total number 36. But what does that really mean? What does it really mean? What to say 33% or a third of, the, of those bananas. By the way, before any non lemur primates question whether a lemur would potentially be able to think this deeply about existentialism and what makes a thing a thing and not something else, you, you might be right. I'm not sure we know whether lemurs are able to think this deeply, but we do have evidence that lemurs, interestingly, do consume millipedes, which send them into a mind-bending trance-like state which could encourage out-of-the-box thinking. Anyway, back to the math. But what does that really mean? What does it really mean What to say 33% or a third of, the, of those bananas? Does that mean we're talking about something happening in reality or something happening in our mind? Well, in regular statistics, you're talking about measuring reality. Whereas with Bayesian statistics, you're talking about a degree of belief. So we're going to focus on that degree of belief. Let's talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, so what you would have with Bayesian thinking or Bayesian probability is the chances of something given experience and a clue. We're going to talk about what are the chances of picking a banana with a bug in it given a clue. First off, the chances of something, the something we're measuring, is going to be calculated at the end. The experience is what we already know. It's something we know about bugs in bananas. So we already know 
starting off, if you have 36 bananas, one of them is going to have a bug in it. Don't question why we know that. That's just for the example here. We've got one bug out of 36 bananas. But we also have a clue, which is if you open the banana up, 99 out of 100 times, there's going to be a bug when you see a green spot. You're in a forest of bananas and you grab a banana, open it up, there's no green spot. What are the chances that there's going to be a bug in there? Is it 1 out of 36? Well, we've got to take into account both the experience and the clue. So it's not going to be 1 out of 36 because we open it up, there's no spot. We have additional information, right? You have that clue and you have different tests that are going on. You have tests that could be done correctly or tests where something went wrong. You have a correct test where no spot means no bug 99 out of 100 times. We've done lots and lots of different testing and we found out that 99 out of 100 times you show no spot, that means there's going to be no bug. We also have another correct test where the green spot means 99 in 100 times there's going to be a bug. So these are fairly accurate tests. Uh, they both are, they only have a 1% chance of error in either direction. So if you're, you've got no spot, 1% chance of error, you have a spot, 1% chance of error. But there's, of course, the other side of the test, the incorrect test, where one out of 100 of those times, you are gonna have a bug, even if there's no spot, and one out of 100 of those times, you've got no bug, even though you have a spot. Really, you're usually tempted to think there's actually just two scenarios going on. A bug that's either in the banana or not, but you have to do that extra step of thinking and consider that there's another scenario giving you four possible outcomes, either the bug or no bug and the spot or no spot. That's very important in Bayesian thinking. So again, we're just trying to keep in mind that there's something called false positives, which are highlighted here in red. You just got to make sure that you look at the false positives uh, type scenario or false negatives. So back to kind of the philosophy of regular statistics versus Bayesian statistics. What are your chances of picking a bad banana? Again, regular statistics, you're looking at ratios of things. You're measuring the actual reality. It's a measurement, right? A measurement of how many out of how many, and you're using that as kind of your rule to pick and figure out what's gonna happen next. Whereas the Bayesian way, you might have one lemur uh, that ha thinks that 99 out of 100 times, you've got a clear banana, there's gonna be no bug in there, but you might have another lemur that comes in and has kind of a different thing that they've learned and sitting in their brain that says maybe it's uh, two thirds of the time when there's no spot, then you've got no bug. So it becomes sort of a subjective measure of what's going to happen. It's more based upon what that clue is and what things you have in your head. And you're really measuring the statement, yes, the banana has a bug in it when these other conditions are true and you're really looking at what percent likely is that statement true rather than measuring actual reality. You're measuring kind of like statements actually. So it's a subjective measurement. It's based upon a clue. Whereas up here, the regular statistics is actual objective ratios of things. You're actually measuring those things. And then you're applying that as opposed to applying a subjective measurement on a statement or an idea. Let's look at the first outcome or possibility where we've got no spot and, a, and uh, we do uh, have a bug. So if we're looking at our experience, we know one out of 36 times you've got a bug in a banana, just one out of 36 whatever bananas not, without opening them. And then our clue says you have one out of 100 times uh, you have a beetle if there's no spot. So that's our... Uh, kind of false uh, negative test there. So you're going to combine those together, multiply them, and you get a little uh, shape, you get a little rectangle because you're multiplying things. That's one by one over a hundred tall by one over 36 units long, 
we're lemurs, of course, so we like to respond to the size of things. And we can see this is a really small, tiny little outcome here, possible outcome. Uh, let's look at the next scenario. We've got a green spot, uh, and yes, we have a bug. Uh, what happens or where, what's the size or of this possibility? What's the relative size? Well, you've got one over 36 uh, out of the experience that you've got a bug in a banana. And then you have 99 out of 100 times that clue is correct that if there's a green spot, then there is a bug. So multiply those together. And what do you get? You get a little rectangle that's 99 over 100 units tall by 1 over 36 units long. Uh, so a little bit bigger than our last uh, scenario or last outcome. But let's look at the third possibility where you have no spot and indeed no bug. Well, now we're looking at 35 over 36. So we're looking at all those yellow bananas, not the red banana. Uh, we know that 35 out of 36 bananas just in general don't have bugs in them. And we know that 99 out of 100 times that clue that there's no bug in there is right. So again, multiply those together and you get a much larger possibility, much bigger square. So we're starting to get some more clarity here on what these scenarios might look like. The Obviously the bigger squares, the more likely overall in reality, you're gonna see these. Fourth scenario, you still got that 35 over 36, uh, those yellow bananas, not the red banana, just in general, that's what you have with bugs and in, inside of bananas. And then you've got the clue. So the clue says, one out of a hundred times there's going to be a false positive test there's going to be that green circle green spot but still no bug in there so again multiply those together and now you've got a little shape rectangle that's 35 over 36 units long by one over a hundred units tall so let's lay these all out and see what we have here on this little chart all right so you've got in the upper left quadrant you have the scenario of no green spot, but there's still a bug in there. Doesn't happen very often. It's pretty small. That's a pretty small outcome. Uh, but just to the right of that, the upper right quadrant, you have no spot and no bug. That happens a lot. That's very likely to happen based upon our calculation so far, the size of our rectangle. And then the bottom two are uh, not as small or as big as the other, but they're uh, they're there, there, they are some other possibilities that are kind of medium, uh, but they're not certainly as, as big as that really big outcome over in the top right there. And here's a numerical form for any primates that might not be uh, lemurs and uh, might like to see numbers. So again, we're, you're in a forest of bananas. You grab a banana, Open it up, there's no spot in there. Do you eat that banana? Do you feel lucky? Lemurs, like humans, avoid risk. We figured out that they really don't like to gamble. <laughs> How does she know? Because in this test, lemurs are taught that if they choose the photograph of the train, they could get a bunch of sugar pellets as a reward, or possibly no pellets at all. But if they choose the safe option, the flag photo, they always get one pellet. Is there a bug in there? Well, if we're measuring reality, uh, if we're doing the objective form, regular statistics, we would say, well, there's uh, on any banana, I don't know about anything about clues, but in any banana, there's going to be a one in 36 chance that there's a bug in it. But we're not using that. We're using degree of belief. We're using Bayesian statistics. So what you do is you take your clue and you take your degree of belief and you combine that with your measure of reality and you got your tiny little spot there that we had calculated earlier. But let's just throw that to the side for the moment because what we need to do as well is not just look at our base case here that we're trying to figure out, is there a bug in it? We have to look at all the cases. So we have to look at the possibility that there is a bug and there is not a bug. So what we do is you take both of those possibilities add them together and you divide our base case by both of those possibilities. So the base case top there being 
that we found a bug in a banana with no spot in it and the bottom being both cases together. So essentially what we're doing is we're dividing that top base case a bug in a clean banana, apparently clean banana, by both cases and getting our number, which is 0 0.000289. So let's compare that to our other methodologies and see what we would have gotten had we not used this kind of thinking. Well, if we were using just experience, going back to that, we would have said there was a about a 2.7 or 0. Uh, uh, 0, 2, 7, 7, 7 chance that there is going to be a bug in the banana. And if we use just the clue, we'd say there was about a 1% chance. Let's turn those into percentages. So what do we see here? Uh, we see that our actual Bayesian degree of belief, something giving, given an experience and a clue, showed us that it was about 0.03% chance very very small percent chance that there's going to be a bug in that banana whereas just experience said there's a three percent chance getting kind of risky and even even the one percent compared to that uh rule above so we found that the using just the clue is 35 times way too fearful and using just experience is about 96 times way too fearful that might not mean as much if you're just talking about one banana but if you're talking about many 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 bananas it starts to add up all right so let's say you are picking another banana out of the forest you open it up there's a green spot in there do you avoid this banana just because of that green spot is there a beetle in there bug in there or not for real well let's do the calculation again here so we've got our regular uh, banana and our belief system, uh, the banana with the green spot, does it have a bug in it, and we've got some of our objectivist measurements that we're combining. And the first uh, base case that we find here is what we had calculated before, so let's throw that over on top of our equation, but we got to remember to, again, double check every single case here. So grab both of those cases that we had calculated earlier, the medium size. And so we're dividing that medium by those mediums to get our final number. And again, we're just dividing, just like we show over on the left here, where it's the uh, base case divided by all cases. So when we do that, we find that we come up with 0.7392 based upon what we had calculated earlier. So let's take a look at that compared to our other methods. So if we had calculated based on just experience rather than something given experience and a clue, in that case, one out of 36 bananas have a beetle in them. So we would be at 0, 2, 7, 7, 7, 8. If we were using just the clue, we would have said 99 out of 100 bananas are going to have a beetle in, in them. If you use just that clue, turning them into percentages, we see that we have some gross miscalculations if we used our kind of regular uh, methods. So here we got a false sense of security. Just using experience told us, yeah, no, there's only 2.78% uh, of bananas have these bugs in them. So don't worry about it. That clue gives us additional information, but if we just use just the clue, it's still too fearful. It's 1.3 times too fearful. That again matters when you start talking about more than just one banana decision. Let's talk about this in terms of practical applications. You have a crate of bananas there. They have all have green spots on them and they're labeled throw out bad bananas. But you're an intrepid, interested, curious lemur. So you're gonna use this Bayesian thinking that we just went through and you're gonna divide the base case of that green spot and the beetle by both cases and see what happens and what is really going on inside of that crate besides just throw them all out. So let's say there's a thousand green spot bananas. You're gonna multiply them by 74% have bugs, which we had calculated earlier and that equals 740 
bug infested bananas out of that thousand. Wait a minute, what was that? Can you go through that again? All right, sure. So you got a thousand green spot bananas times 74% have bugs based on that ratio we had calculated earlier. And that equals 740 bug infested bananas, which means 260 clean bananas. That's far different than what we would have expected if we used just that clue. If we would have just said 99 out of 100 bananas are going to be bad, we would have thrown out the whole crate pretty much. You're never going to find that one good banana. But in this case, more than a quarter of the bananas could have been wasted. That's a lot of bananas for lemurs that could have been wasted. So the next time you hear someone say, I don't get Bayesian statistics, or Bayesian statistics are hard, it's tricky, I, I don't know how to apply them. You say, oh, well, it's, it's really quite simple. You, you just have to remember that lemurs eat millipedes, venomous millipedes that help intoxicate them and help them tra travel to a different plane of existence in their mind. And, and um, okay, well, so once they, when they look at you as though you are the one eating the venomous millipedes, uh, you say, okay, well, listen, it's about, uh, it's about looking at things differently, changing your perspective from merely just counting things, uh, counting ratios of bananas, uh, good bananas to bad bananas. It's not about counting. It's about using some ratio that we already knew about in our mind and combining it with a clue, another test, another ratio, and shifting our way of thinking to calculate what ratio of a statement is true or what ratio of a belief is true, something in our mind, putting numbers on ideas in our brains rather than thinking of numbers as something that can only be used to count objects outside of ourselves in physical reality. What are the fundamental building blocks upon which complex human cultures and systems of knowledge are built? And by studying these kinds of thought processes in lemurs and monkeys and apes and other animals, we can begin to shed insight into that kind of question.